Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. In today's episode, we're going to go over spaces about electrical equipment. These are spaces that are required per the National Electric Code, and nobody wants to fail their final inspection because of a small oversight over some uh, equipment spaces. Let's get into it. So 110.26a explains what does require these spaces about the electrical equipment. And that is equipment that is likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized. Now that does leave a little bit up to the interpretation of the inspector, but that's pretty much any like circuit breakers, any wiring, um, anything that's manually installed and wired up, any switches, uh, disconnects, things like that, that's all gonna count. Something such as like a, a self-contained battery cabinet, such as maybe a, a Tesla power wall or the EG4 uh, wall mount batteries, right? You could argue that that does not require any of these situations while energized, um, but really that's up to the interpretation of the inspector. So 110.26A1 talks about depth. Now today we're just gonna go over your standard residential single phase services. Um, you know, there is a table in the National Electric Code for these higher voltage systems that you might see at a commercial or an industrial space, but that's not what we're talking about here today. So. For just your standard residential service, it's pretty much always going to be three feet deep. So that means off the face of the equipment, we need three feet deep, uh, clear of any obstruction so a person can safely work on that equipment. You'll notice I avoided putting any electrical equipment here in front of these stairs because they would have been in that required three foot working clearance for an electrician to safely stand and work on that equipment. 110.26A2 goes over the width, and that is gonna be 30 inches or the width of the equipment, whichever of those two numbers is greater. Also, the door must be able to open 90 degrees. So if there's a hinged door like the dead front of a breaker panel, that door needs to at least be able to swing open 90 degrees. Next is 110.26A3, that's gonna go over height. So for height, we need six foot, six inches, or the height of the equipment, whichever is greater. So if you're in a small crawl space, you need at least six foot, six inches to mount any electrical equipment. If your ceiling is lower than six foot, six inches, you cannot mount electrical equipment there whatsoever. Other equipment associated with the installation shall not extend more than six inches into the working space of the equipment. Now, for example, we've got our bypass switch here above this equipment. This is technically in that required working space of this panel, but it does not extend more than six feet off of the front of this equipment. Being that it is electrical equipment, it is associated with this uh, uh, installation. It is allowed as long as it doesn't extend beyond that six inches. Now, if this was not electrical equipment, it was like a bookshelf or you know something other than electrical equipment, that would be a working space code violation. 110.26b says clear spaces. This is a newer section of the code. Essentially, you need to keep that working space clear. It's not to be used for storage. You don't want a bunch of junk laying around are piled up when the inspector comes to inspect your system. So in this case, the area is not clear of a bunch of junk. Uh, if an inspector showed up for this inspection, they could fail it because I have all this stuff piled up in front of my required working spaces. So just make sure before you call that final inspection, just go ahead and move all your stuff out of the way and clean up. So just a quick review of working spaces and what we've covered here. Um, the whole point of the working spaces is so that an electrician or a homeowner can safely stand in front of electrical equipment, service it, flip breakers, turn disconnects without being in a situation where they can't escape in the event of an arc fault or a ground fault or where something goes wrong. 
Um, so just imagine a, an imaginary box in front of all of your electrical equipment that goes three feet deep off of the face of the equipment, 30 inches wide. Now that can be off of one corner to the other. If say there's a structure wall here, we would just need 30 inches from the corner, you know, over clear a 30 inch box that could be also from this corner over the, to that way, or it could be anywhere in between. We just need a 30 inch wide box that is three feet deep. And again, don't forget that six and a half feet tall. Um, if the structural ceiling is lower than six and a half feet tall, you're crap out of luck and you got to find a different area to mount your electrical equipment. So 110.26E covers dedicated space. Now to be clear, this is not working space, which we were talking about all above. This is dedicated space of the equipment. So basically the equipment itself uh, needs to have this dedicated space. And that is going to be the depth and width of the equipment. It's going to extend to six feet above the equipment or the structural ceiling, whichever is lower. So if you have a, you know, seven foot ceiling, essentially, and you have equipment, you can have any foreign systems above that equipment outside of the electrical installation. If you don't have a ceiling uh, above the equipment or you have extremely high ceilings, you just need an area that extends at least six feet above the equipment, uh, clear of any foreign systems. This, for example, is a code violation because we have foreign piping, this water pipe, within the working space of this equipment. If it was just moved a couple inches to the left here of this pipe, we would be in the clear, but in this case, it's not. So only equipment associated with that electrical equipment is allowed in this dedicated space, right? So if it's other electrical equipment, you're good to go. If it is something like heating and air conditioning or water piping or something along those lines, it is not associated with that equipment and is not allowed in that dedicated space. So technically this is a code violation. This is a heating and air conditioning duct. It is within this dedicated space of this equipment above this equipment. It is not, I would say it's not really in the working space, but it is in the dedicated space right here. Uh, because again, we need six feet above the equipment clear of any foreign piping systems or the structural ceiling, whatever is less. So uh, what I did in this situation, I knew that this could be an issue, but I tried to push this ducting up into the ceiling and strap it off so that my inspector wouldn't give me a hard time. In my case, he didn't, but if he really wanted to be a stickler, he could have called me out on this piping. The area above the dedicated space can contain foreign systems as long as electrical components are protected from breaks, leaks, and condensation. I highlighted above there because that does not say these foreign systems can be in the dedicated space. It's saying if it's above the dedicated space. So that means higher than six feet above the equipment or higher than the structural ceiling. So essentially, you know, if you got heating and air conditioning ducts or water piping, you don't want, you want to prevent them from being able to leak on your electrical equipment. Lastly, outdoors. So roof extensions or overhangs are allowed in this zone. Um, so they're to be considered similar to a structural ceiling, essentially, right? They don't count as being in the space. Um, so if it's lower than six feet, that's fine. If there's a little overhang over your home. Well, everyone, hopefully that's helpful in choosing your equipment spaces. It's going to get you through that final inspection the first time around without getting any rejections and prevent you from having to make any lengthy, expensive installation rework on your systems. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Till next time, take care.